All right, here we go. So 10.1, we're talking about curves defined by parametric equations. Um, so imagine that a particle moves along this curve shown in this figure. It's impossible to describe that curve by an equation of the form y equals f of x, because it clearly fails the vertical line test. Um, so, the way we can define this is instead come up with a third, what we're going to call parameter. And the way we're going to do that is just define x as its own function of t, y as a different function of t, and we call t that third variable the parameter. And so these two separately are called parametric equations. So T doesn't necessarily represent time, although oftentimes we can think of it that way. But this just allows us to create curves that don't have to pass the vertical line test. They can overlap themselves. All right, so each value of t will determine a separate coordinate, x, y, that we can plot in the coordinate plane. As t varies, the point uh, x, y, which is given by f of t, g of t, will vary, and it'll trace out the curve c. We call that a parametric curve. So let's practice. So I'm going to start graphing this. We'll just do this the old fashioned way, like when you first got into pre-algebra and you started exploring graphical representations. The way we do it is just by plotting separate points. So I'm going to start, I'm going to make a table and we'll have a T column, an X column, and a Y column. And t is our input variable, so we're going to choose values of t. So I'm going to start at negative 2. We'll do negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then when we're done, I'll sort of sketch out what we have in a coordinate plane like this. All right, so when t is negative 2, we can plug t into the x equation. We'll get negative 2 squared, so that's 4 plus 4, so that's 8, right? And y is going to be t plus 1, so negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So I get 8, negative 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, negative 1. All right, there's my first point. When t is negative 1, x is 1 plus 2, which is 3. y is negative 1 plus 1, which is 0. So I get the point 3, 0. All right, when t is 0, x is 0, y is 1, so we get the point 0, 1. All right, when t is 1, 
we get one minus two, which is negative one, x is negative one, y is two, negative one, two, t is 2, x is 4, minus 4 is 0, y is 3, so 0, 3. When t is 3, we get 9 minus 6, so x is 3, y is 4, so 3, 4. When t is 4, x is what? 16 minus 8. x is 8, y is 5. And then we'll trace out the curve in the direction of the values of t. So keep in mind what's going on. We have t equals, uh, whoops, negative 2. Oh my god. Negative 2. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So I'll just trace that out. we go. So what we end up with is what looks like a sideways parabola, right? And actually, it is a sideways parabola, and we can prove that, because sometimes you can put these strictly in terms of x and y. A sideways parabola is not a function of x, because it doesn't pass the vertical line test, but it could be written as a function of y. And so the way I can do that, notice that in this equation, it's possible to isolate t. I could just subtract 1. So I could say t equals y minus 1. And then I could take that y minus 1 and substitute it in for t over here. So then x equals y minus 1 squared minus 2 times y minus 1. And if you actually multiply that out, this would just be a quadratic equation in y, right? So x is a function of y here which is a sideways parabola. All right, so there's your first parametric curve. So when we talk about a parametric curve with parametric equations and you define t between a and b, we say it has terminal point f of a, g of a, or sorry, initial point f of a, g of a, and terminal point f of b, g of b. So the one we just sketched, that's initial point, and that's terminal point. All right. Well, turns out you actually have some experience with parametric equations. You just didn't know it. But x equals cosine t, y equals sine t is technically a parametric curve. You're used to it being in this form instead of t theta, right? But that creates the unit circle when you let your parameter go between 0 and 2 pi. Your terminal point would be at 1, 0, and that's also your uh, initial point. So it traces around the circle this way. Remember that all comes from the fact that
if we square these, Sine squared plus cosine squared we know is equal to one, right? We'll notice that if we do a substitution, if I replace cosine with x, I get x squared. If I replace sine with y, I get y squared, which is the equation of a circle with radius one, right? All right, so let's learn how to use our calculator. We can kind of show that. All right, so what you're gonna do is change the mode of your calculator. So we're gonna go to mode. And you're gonna go down to where it says function and change it to parametric. And then you can quit to the main screen. All right, so that doesn't change anything about any function of the main screen, but what it will change is when you go into y equals, you're now going to see that you're given parametric equations instead of just y equals, right? So if I do just what they asked us for, which was cosine, and now when you click what was your x, it's going to give you a t instead. So if I do cosine t, and then y is sine t. Right now I'm going to go to window and that's going to be changed as well. So now the window, in addition to giving it parameters for X and Y to show, you have to give it parameters for T. So let's say I want to, I want to start T at zero and I'll have it go to two pi. Now your T step is how fine you want the calculator because it does, the way that your calculator works for parametric equation is the same way that we graphed that first one. It's going to do it basically by calculating points at various values of t and then just connecting the dots like we did for that sideways parabola. So you basically have to tell it, okay, how fine do you want it to graph those, those points? How, what do you want the step in between the points to be? If you make it too big, your circle is going to come out looking like a square. If you make it too small, it'll just take a really long time to calculate. So somewhere around 0.1 is usually pretty good, but we'll kind of explore with that so you can see what I'm talking about. Now this is a unit circle, so it just has a radius of one. So I'll give myself a little leeway. Let's go out to like negative 1.5 in the X direction, positive 1.5. And same for the Y, we'll go negative 1.5 to positive 1.5. And then we'll just hit graph. Kind of looks like an oval. The reason is, or an ellipse, I should say, the reason is your calculator's screen is a rectangle. So it distorts it a little bit. If you do zoom, if you go zoom square, the fifth option, that'll make it less distorted for you. So zoom five. And now you can see it looks like a circle, right? All right, so let's mess around with the, the T-step settings. Let's make it really small. So if I do like, if I make my T-step like 0 0.001, and then I hit graph again, it's calculating so many individual points that it's just gonna graph super slow, right? <laughs> it's getting there. <laughs> Do you have an 83, Eva? No, I have an 84. Oh, okay. It's just an older operating system, probably. Um, yeah, so you can tell it to, 
if you just do second quit, I think it'll interrupt it. All right, if I do, um, now let's make it big. If we make it like, here, here's a good one. If we make it pi over two, it's just gonna calculate your coordinates on the quadrants at zero pi over two pi, three pi over two, and then two pi. And then it's gonna connect those dots. So this is gonna come out looking like a diamond. But like I said, usually around 0.1 is pretty reasonable. Because that won't distort your graph and it'll graph it reasonably fast as a curve. All right, let's try and graph the first one just so that we get more practice. Um, that was t squared minus 2t and t plus 1. Let's change up our window. So now we want to at least see, let's go, let's do what we did. So we did negative two, whoops. Two, four. I'll keep my T step at point one. But now I need to change up my X and Y. So X, min um i don't know negative four, oh geez negative four to ten y min negative two to ten all right and you can see it's not like when we graph functions when we graph functions the calculator will graph it infinitely outward this is only graphing for the values of t that we told it to graph between, right? So you can see the parabola actually stops at our initial point and our terminal point. So I could extend it by extending my, my t values. So if I wanted to go from like negative 5 to 8 and then regraph, now you can see it's going off of my screen, right? You can kind of mess around with that to get a feel for it. If you were to just have your team in at two, you're only going to get like the mostly the top piece of that parabola, right? So it's extra stuff to think about to be making sure that you're getting the full picture of the curve that you want. All right, let's finish with one more. So let's say you're given a function, but it's in terms of y that you wanted to graph. So you're not even given a parametric function. You can always turn it into a parametric function by just letting y equal t, and then x is g of t. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's say we had an equation of this form, x equals y to the fourth minus 3y squared. If I just let y equal t, then x is t to the fourth minus 3t squared. And all of a sudden, we have a pair of parametric equations that we should be able to use our calculator to graph, right? So let's 
So x is t to the fourth. minus 3 t squared and then y is just t now for this one a, a decent window nate we can just go um i don't know about my t value so i'm just going to start with negative 10 to 10 and see if that gets me a decent picture keep my t step as 0.1 my x min negative 5 X max is five and Y min, I'll do the same. Negative five to five. So there we go. Yep, we got a decent picture of it. If you're ever getting jagged edges, make your T-step smaller to make sure that that's what's actually going on and not just a function of you have too large of a T-step. All right.